Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, this is interesting point. Uh, the U.S. withdrawal does make a big impact or not. Well, we will talk about it later, but let's listen to Fleetbud. Well, well, I wish that uh, the optimism of uh, Li He Min and uh, Olivier uh, would come true. And, uh, well, of course, we all hope that these aims uh, which we all support, uh, will come true in spite of Trump's uh, opposition. Mm. I'm somewhat more optim uh, pessimistic and share That's Andre's uh, views. Mm -hmm. uh, my reasons are, uh, first of all, if you lose an engine, mm. uh, and this engine is the most powerful country in the world still, mm -hmm. then it is hardly understandable how this should not have an impact, even if the states and the cities of the United States, mm. and we all uh, happen to mention that uh, and, and uh, in some sort of self-hypnosis, uh, believe, well, this cannot happen. Well, even if they all do their homework, uh, there is no leadership coming from the United States. Uh, and my country, Germany, I, I think it was very nice what you said to the German leadership at G20 uh, and also in Marrakesh uh, a year ago at the, at the, at the COP meeting, uh, the German government said, well, we will fill in and fill the vacuum of United States leadership, but uh, in all modesty, Germany cannot do that. America <laughs> is more powerful. Uh, so I believe that this will have an impact uh, within the United States, but even more, uh, other countries uh, might be tempted to hide behind the United States. Mm. It is very easy to have a rhetoric for CO2 reductions, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Lee, if I may come back to South Korea, I, I was in Korea last year and took part at this uh, World Knowledge Conference and we discussed the Korean way towards Paris. And, well, I, I don't want to be blunt, but uh, there was not the slightest implication how Korea depended very much on fossil fuels, having a strong uh, industry, uh, traditional industry, how Korea will meet these ambitious goals. And if I look to my own country, which is perceived as a front runner in uh, climate uh, protection policies. Well, my country has set out the aim uh, to reduce the German CO2 reduction by the year 2020 about 40% uh, uh, in comparison to 1990, 40%. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody says, well, great, the German leadership. If you look to the figures today, and we are at the end of 2017, mm -hmm. we have reached 28% of these 40. So we are far behind schedule. And without the uh, shutting down of the East German uh, coal power plants after reunification, we would not have gone very far. Uh, we still have 50% coal in our energy mix. So what happened was an enormous and very positive increase of renewables but unfortunately to the disadvantage of gas and to the advantage of cheap coal. Mm. So only cheap coal and subsidized renewables could survive in the German energy market. But the overall result, great progress with renewables, no progress uh, when it comes to coal, uh, is not very impressive and is not a model for the rest of the world. I'm very sorry to say that about my own country. I'm a supporter of Mrs. <laughs> Merkel, of this government, uh, have been 20 years in parliament, but I know how politicians act, mm. uh, because I was a politician myself. If it is difficult to reach an aim, uh, an aim until 2020, what do you do? You put an even more ambitious aim for 2050 on the agenda. So everybody says, wow, these guys are really uh, dedicated to, to change something. But you 
never have to prove it, whether you're able to do it. So this is a little bit the situation, not only Germany, but the whole world is in. Uh, and the UN Development Program came out with a study last week, no, this week, mm -hmm. and said, well, if we continue like this, mm -hmm. we will end up at the end of the century with three mm -hmm. uh, degrees yeah. and not 1.5. Mm -hmm. So I think it is time to become more realistic. Again, I'm very much believer, a believer of climate change, that mm -hmm. it is an enormous task. I believe in climate policies, but I think we are far too optimistic in our aims, and we concentrate much too much on renewables. Mm. Renewable is important. Uh, uh, the future is with renewables. But if we were able to get rid of the coal power plants uh, in the world, and let's start with the most dirtiest ones, we would do much more against climate change than with many new programs of renewable energy. So make coal, uh, to take coal more and more out of the market and substitute it by gas. Mm. United States is an example. We criticize Trump, but now comes the positive side. Mm -hmm. Not Trump, but the United States. In the last eight years, uh, the coal share in the energy mix of the United States shrunk from 51 to 31 percent. 20 percent in eight years. Why? Because of the shale gas revolution. Mm -hmm. So gas substituted coal. Mm. And this brought a reduction of CO2 emissions by 36 percent. So my country, Germany, always the front runner in rhetoric, United States always at the, at the very end. But if you look to the real figures, it's exactly the opposite. And if you look to Britain, it's the, pretty much the same thing. Uh, in, in Britain, we had in the beginning of the 90s the dash for gas. So uh, coal was substituted by gas. Uh, they introduced uh, combined uh, power and heat uh, turbines in their gas power plants, modernization. And they took away coal also with a uh, carbon table, a, a special a British uh, carbon tax, uh, and so they diminished enormously their CO2 reduction. Mm. So my idea is let us look more to gas. Mm. The international community has the tendency to say coal, uh, oil and gas are all fossils, they are bad and renewables are good. I would say uh, coal is bad, Oil we need for a long time, especially in the developing nations. But gas is a positive factor and a positive partner of renewables for a long time. And if we, for instance, in my country, and it's true for many other developed countries, would substitute our old oil heating systems, our old gas heating systems uh, in, in households, in the industry, by modernizing them, I think we would have we would uh, be able to get the benefit of low-hanging fruits of climate change. Mm. We shouldn't make these ambitious goals, but concentrate a little bit okay. more on what we can do in the next years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Yeah, thank you very much. You sound a little more optimistic about uh, what the U.S. is deciding, in a way, that golden age of gas in the United States suddenly help to mitigate the CO2 emission by replacing uh, old coal power plant, right? So it's, this is exactly what, uh, yeah, Trump is trying to help coal, but uh, I think it is almost impossible. So maybe using gas, make, cheap gas makes a really good uh, policy there. Sure, here I agree to your point of view. Uh, tr what Trump did was he took uh, a couple of coal uh, representatives and put them into the Environmental Protection Agency, which is pretty much the same as if you would take uh, supporters of the peace movement at the head of the, uh, of the Department the of Defense. defense. Right? I mean, it's uh, amazing that he did that, but all his rhetoric for coal did not accomplish. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, Vista Energy from mm -hmm. Texas mm -hmm. uh, declared the retirement of four gigawatt uh, coal mm -hmm. power plants by the year 2018 because 
of cheap gas. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in this regard, there is hope that the United States, not because of Trump's policies, but because of the rules of the market, yeah. uh, will uh, <coughs> succeed better than many other places in the world.